friend, I do think that it is appropriate to tackle news okay. because there are some important things that we can talk about here. And obviously, one of the more important stories that is going on right now, of course, is with Dr. Fauci. Now, uh, obviously, most people know right now that there's a lot going on as it pertains to the emails. People say that it's, um, you know, FOIA, so it's not a leak. Listen, public information when it comes to our public officials should be readily available at all times. We should not have these massive secrets about what is being done and what isn't being done. You know, there's a lot of people who feel that one of the things that cost Trump his reelection was the interview he did with Bob Woodward, where he knew just how devastating the COVID virus oh, was. Oh, that was back that in was bad. back in February. Yeah. Well, guess who else knew how bad it was? Dr. Fauci. And Dr. Fauci didn't seem to give a damn much either. As he went on national TV and said, you don't have to wear a mask. Now, how come he's not being held to the same standard? Why? Because he's part of the Democratic establishment. That's why. Do I think that there's an over amount of notorious behavior on Fauci's part? Yeah, it, that's, that's up for debate. You mean nefarious. Nefarious. But ultimately, his decision to withhold information about just mask wearing is incredible. And is he going to pay a political price for it? Is he going to pay any type of a price? I don't think so. I don't think he'll pay any kind of a price. Much like any news cycle, this thing John will just get washed away. John has a good question. Away. What was so scandalous about his emails? Because you, I don't understand it. I mean, in his emails, he indicates that he is aware that there was a lab leak. Listen, I've said from the very beginning that the reason COVID spread is because it was leaked in a in a lab in China. Well, yeah. And, I mean, and, I've always thought this was lab but, born. But there are a lot of people who went around suggesting that even saying something like that was wrong. To even suggest that it was a lab leak is a conspiracy. Now, what I've always believed is that when the establishment comes down on you with all of their weight, if you suggest something, that means there's there's but fire. But what does this mean? All is well despite some crazy people in the world. That's obviously a quote from his email. Well, I think that there's a lot of these truthers out there that have this idea about what is uh, you know, actually effective and what isn't in terms of whether or not you can wear a mask. Fauci was under the impression that you you know, really don't have the opportunity to be that effective in terms of preventing the spread of the virus simply by wearing a mask. Now, if you have the virus, you should wear a mask and it does help prevent the spread. But the idea that everybody should be wearing a mask may ultimately not be true. I don't think that that's the big scandal here. What I do think is the big scandal is that they did know that it was leaked from a lab and dealing with it properly at the time is something that was not of a priority to them. And the biggest reason why Fauci apparently said that you shouldn't wear a mask is because they were concerned about shortages for hospitals. So instead of enacting the War Powers Act, which would have given the president, at this time Trump, the authority to make millions upon millions of masks immediately, they would not enact the War Powers Act because they wanted to make sure that he lost the presidency. Listen, I'm not into this whole conspiracy <laughs> nonsense, but if anyone thinks for a second that there was not a collective effort from the heads of state, from the most powerful entities in the country. And Trump is a, is a danger. There's no question about it. But to suggest that there wasn't a collective effort to get him out, you, you, I, I don't know what you're looking at. Because anyone who is looking at the current president of the United States and thinks that he is not having severe issues, he's been having them for a very long time. Now it's over the top. And it's getting to the point where I don't know how he's going to make it. I don't know, but you've gotten way off track. I haven't gotten off track. We were talking about Dr. Fauci and then then you're now you're talking about Biden. I'm talking about the fact that we are in a situation right now that is all collectively brought together because of the fact that I'm sure there was a, listen, we are on the outside looking in. We are not inside. We don't know what people knew, when they knew it and all that. What I do know is that Fauci in writing has said a lot of things that Trump said. Would it be surprising if they actually were communicating and Trump was essentially saying what Fauci was saying? That's very possible. But again, uh, the liberal media is going to liberal media. That's what they do. And that's where we are. Do I think that Fauci is this overly nefarious guy? I don't know. But do I think he's a figurehead for big pharma and private insurance? Of oh, most certainly he is. But Which it's is no different than like the CDC. It's, that's all, true. it's all just little arms. And just remember, pharma. they never said a word about Medicare for all or UBI. And that's what it comes down to. And so ultimately, 
these types of things, the, the, the power of industry and why that's so, so significant to where we are right now leads us to the next story, which is, of course, JBS moves to reopen vast majority of plants after cyber attack. Now, what happened? Well, and by the way, this is a meat plant. Yes. Yes. It most certainly so is. So this is maybe like, the only way we're going to save our, our world mm, is through sort of like an, an anonymous, you know, it's like V for Vendetta. If you guys haven't seen that, understand that a cyber attack well, is more or less how you shut these places well, down. Well, that's what I've always thought. I've always thought that what the revolution ultimately is going to look like is when mm -hmm. you have some hackers take the, actually take the money from the rich and give it to the poor. Yeah. That's the revolution. And I think that really you're only one good hacker away from somebody being able to do that. I do think that that's very likely. I think that that's <clears throat> probably what's going to happen because it, it's kind of an old cliche, but they say it all the time. The only way you, you are not going to be able to vote out rich people's money. But what happened can, with this cyber attack on them? Because um, it effectively shut down their plants. They couldn't produce they couldn't operate their machinery. Ah. So, hey, you know what? I understand that- More of like that. To, Let's do more of that. We, we don't have an- a, a, here's, the, here's the issue that I have when it comes to ag agriculture in the United States. And this is one of the reasons why that's the one position that I would consider going after at some point, because agriculture is as significant as anything in this country. Big agriculture, I'm talking- meat industry, poultry industry. Well, all of it. No, yeah. it's big agra. Yeah. It's a big thing. They own, the, just like Big Pharma owns Congress, Big Agra owns, owns Congress. Yeah. So they get these massive subsidies to be able to do rock bottom prices. How do you think they're able to sell, you know, $2, you know, double cheeseburgers at McDonald's? It's because of this ish. They're able to get <laughs> away with this. And I'm thinking. You're thinking it. Always. So, so how long have they been shut down from this? I think it's only been about a week. So it's a new thing. This is not something that just came out of left field, but it is ultimately going to be a, a very big deal going forward because now there is going to, once tech, you see technology can be used for good and it could be used for bad. Uh, In this instance, one can argue that it's good and bad. Because it is causing, a, you know, a massive setback in terms of wasted food product, in terms of people's livelihoods. But at the same time, our carbon footprint is out of control. Where are we ever going to recognize, when will we recognize that big agriculture is, along with the military industrial complex, the two biggest causes yep. of runaway climate change on the planet? No, I mean, I'm not going to get into like the don't eat meat thing, but if everybody ate less meat, yes. if everybody just ate less meat. But um, OK, so this was one of the stories you forwarded me. I wasn't exactly sure what you wanted to do with that. So, well, which which one are you referring to? The one about, about the plants. Or I, you... Yeah, no, I thought it was very important because, again, uh, <laughs> At some point, you have to ask yourself, well, how is change going to happen if we don't force it? Because that's what it's kind of coming down yeah. to. So we, what we're saying is basically we're needing more hackers to do more of these kinds of things in more crucial industries. DJ is right. There is a, it, it's kind of like the argument is ultimately being made that, well, if this is the way they're going to play, then we're going to have to either beat them at their own game or we're going to have to get even better at it than they are. So I'm not adverse to that idea that we do have to more or less, if they're going to punch us, we got to punch them back and punch them back even harder. Can we punch Ron DeSantis? No, Ron is asking to be punched. And again, Ron is running not just for governor. No, but he's, he's running, running for, for president. president of the United States he right is. now. Because he clearly is the GOP He's front doing all sorts of signaling, and this is no different to me. If anyone thinks- But you know, do you see how I have him holding the pride and the trans flags yeah. in his little hand? <laughs> And that's and, and that is kind of funny. It is. It amuses me. Listen, I love doing that. Let's assume that there really are a lot of people who have an issue with trans girls <clears throat> competing in girls sports. OK, because a lot of people do, even if they don't say it publicly. The fact that you choose to pass this law on the first day of Pride Month just shows that you really do want to delegitimize the LGBTQ community. 
That's what it's all about. It's not about that this law has nothing to do with it. This has everything to do with you're different and we want you to basically be cast out like you're a leper. That's basically what yeah. it is. Well, it's. I think it's just really, he's signaling his base. That's all he's doing. He is. And he's, they, he's, they love this stuff. They eat this stuff up. They do. They think like, oh my God, you know, it's, <laughs> and again, it all gets back to the fact that- So the, we that could the, talk about that bill. Yeah. And, and the GOP, of course- is you know they have a very large portion of their voting base that is hard conservative right religious right and this is religion this is all about this idea uh, you know it, is a net yeah of course and again John is right I know John is right and from no, this not point, really how many people are we talking about here? they find the one runner the one person who is a who felt let's impacted say that there's by maybe a hundred to two hundred people in the whole country that this is actually an issue with. It's, it's, it, it is 100% religion. But you know what? Okay. So my thoughts on the sports thing are that there is a way to handle the situation that would be completely just. There's ways to manage this. It's not something that can't be managed. Right. And I think that when you're talking about people who have been transitioning, who have been taking um, hormones, who are a certain, you know, into their transitional process, that's a completely different thing. Nobody is waking up one day as a man putting on a dress to go compete in lady sports. That's a Rodney Dangerfield movie. That's not real. That's not what happens. And so when you're looking at the majority of athletes that are trans athletes, these are people that were transitioned. They're, they're athletes in their capacity as yep. their as their gender identity. Um, and they've even done studies on trans people pre and post transition in terms of their physical capabilities. And the physical capabilities of a trans woman is equal to that of a cis woman. Um, and that the, the people who previously as male identified as male were infinitely stronger. So to me, this is really not an issue, people. Yes, I would say if somebody wakes up one day, puts on the dress and shows up at the track meet, you might be able to say, mm, maybe not so good. But really, but again, and is this we, worth legislating over? That's other than, the whole well, point. It's about just it also is festering just hate. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to basically single out people. Because you're creating an issue that isn't an issue. Well, I, but that's the Correct. same thing with the bathroom thing. Yeah. Also, never an issue. It's never been an issue. No, but it's an issue now. And why is it an issue now? Because the GOP is not moving economically. So they have to find another way. Their way, they think, is culturally. Why? Because this country is having somewhat of a workers' revolution that's brewing at the surface, and it is going to spill over. There is a significant portion of this country who is well aware now that they are worth more than what they've been getting for a long time. A living wage, universal health care, dealing with the environment, yeah. ending these pointless wars that are using up our tax dollars. There are so many things that could ultimately change our country for the better, but they are not changing because we are being distracted by these Pointless, and it is pointless. It is pointless to pass these kinds of bills because it doesn't really affect anybody. It affects it's such a microcosm of people. You know, mental mental health care for pulse survivors. Who and, and I want to know. Yes, DeSantis did. Who was the legislator who decided to stick that into the bill? I'd like to know who that is. Yeah, John. That that, John, if you could find out who yeah, that was, look into that. Find out yeah. who did who sponsored that because, yeah. That somebody thought to go out of their way to do that is definitely somebody we need to know who that is. With that said, one of the things that we try to do here on our show that maybe other shows are not as up to speed on doing, what and I'm it? talking more about corporate media. Yeah, you know, look, in, in the independent media sphere, especially on, you know, the, the platforms that we use, I think we can all agree that we are trying to do our best to get the best possible message across to help the most amount of people. Where we are right now though, unfortunately, is in this ever-growing battle with corporate media. We saw this the other day. Yep. Uh, Kyle Kalinske did a fantastic video talking about what Crystal and Sagar dealt with at the Hill in terms of the fact that they, they were okay with Crystal going and doing a podcast with Kyle. But once they found out how popular Kyle Kalinske was, uh-uh, 
you can't do that because that gets more ratings than we do. Yeah, well, that's he's had, he that. has Kyle gets more views than CNN, though. Hundred <laughs> percent. Like, I mean, that that goes without saying. And very well may have facilitated their exit. But what I thought was most interesting, and of course, leave it to Jen to find this article that I wasn't even aware of. It's so funny. To and me. where else could it possibly have come from than CNN? That's the thing. The definition of irony is CNN with, with above the headline, mm -hmm. most Americans think they can spot fake news. They can't. Yeah. Study finds. But I just, the irony of CNN talking about fake news is just, you, you really can't make this stuff up. All right, let's hear it. Well, you want to know what fake news is? Fake news is telling everyone that I'm not going to be popular on social media just because I stopped writing a blog. The blog is great. It's really incredible. And people just weren't able to get to it because fake news. They said I didn't have a blog. They kept telling people they, were, they didn't know where to find it. And it was off. And that's totally wrong. So I'm going to be starting my own media venture. And you can all join. You're going to have a really great time. And in due time. Uh -huh. You will see me again. I hope not. I'm coming back. I don't Believe know. Believe me when I tell you. Oh, God. You're not getting rid of me. Oh, we could, I'm just though. getting started. I'd rather great not. Great to see you, Jen. Yeah. Have a great show. Bye, guys. But it's true. Fake news is But I just, I think that's just so funny that they would even, and here's the thing. I didn't read this. And the reason I didn't read it is that I generally don't read CNN as and like I don't that's not anything I would like watch. I just thought it was totally funny. But this just goes to show you that what ultimately <laughs> ends up happening is they capture the banner headline and that's all that gets out there. It's no different. Here's the thing. Chris Cuomo. What do you call Chris Cuomo? Chris Cuomo? What do you call him? Fredo. So when Fredo <laughs> Are you doing that? When the Clinton, Fredo. when the Clinton emails were were dropped back in the summer of 2016, yeah. Chris Cuomo goes on the air and tells millions of viewers that you can't read these emails. You're not allowed to read them, <laughs> so don't do it. Almost as if to say, if you read those emails, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Could you imagine? No. Of course, but I can't imagine, Great. and and that's. But that just goes to show you how desperate they are because now- <laughs> That is awesome. Quo no. Quo no. Quo no. <laughs> That's so You awesome. want to fight? Uh, That's a slur against Italian people. Oh, for God's sake. Pipe down, Guido. Pipe down. Yeah. For, <laughs> he likes to do workout videos. Oh, uh, whatever. He's got a real he, reputation. He, and you know what? And that's somebody that is compensating for something, he has is. a chip on his shoulder, has little brother complex, whatever it is. Just remember, find you a therapist. Only have Chris, the find job, a therapist. He only has the job. And listen, he's a buff guy. He's a handsome guy. He's all right. He's nothing of, special. But the truth is, he only has his job because his last name is Cuomo. Just like McCain has a job oh. because of her last name. Okay, she's worse. She is. But I'm just saying that they get nepotism runs rampant. And even though we don't have any news up for it yet, we will discuss it. George P. Bush is running. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Jeb's son is now running for attorney general of Texas. Nice. And Lara Trump apparently is running for the Senate in North Carolina. Well, that great, a new monarchy. A brand new monarchy. And you know what? Since we're about to have none other than Chris Smalls come onto our podcast, we will segue. Well, this our is why I thought story. this is why I thought this this story is funny because it's not, it has this sort of too little, too late feeling to me. Like you don't get to be total trash to your workers, but then put out, okay, but it's okay if you smoke weed, yeah, because you're desperate for people to come work for you because you don't want to pay them. It's Not, like, you know, yeah, that's nice. So you're letting them. So, so you, got two, you got two things and you didn't get. Like, and it's legal, by one. the way, in most places now. Well, that's now. true. So, but Amazon won't test job seekers for cannabis. Wow, that's great. And you didn't see the other thing that apparently they're doing now. Now they have, now they're apparently trying to install like meditation uh, booths inside the distribution centers. Anything not to pay workers a right, fair way. Right. Hey, so, you're having a stressful day. You go into that booth. We'll put on some nice little music. We'll even put a little uh, massage hands. These uh, you know what that is? It's, it's, it's so going. Democrat of them. Oh, Big absolutely. D Democrat. Like that's exactly what, like something that, that is exactly like the Democrat way. It's like we're not going to really help you. We're not going to really help you, but we're going to like make it look a little <laughs> bit better for you. <laughs> that's absolutely true. And so.
Thanks for watching. If you want to support our mission to transform politics into service, please like this video, subscribe, follow us on social media, and consider joining our Patreon, where you'll get early access to our interviews as well as other exclusive content. Links are in the description. Peace out.